welcome viewers to another episode on ASUG 12 exams. So in this episode we continue looking at the GCE 2020 science paper 1 which is basically physics. So in the previous episodes we've covered section A, B and also question C1 and C2. So in this episode we are looking at question C3 which is the last one in this uh, series of episodes. So if you haven't seen the other episodes please check out on our YouTube channel. Remember for you to ace your G12 exams you need to revise as much as possible. So let us look at question C3. A radioactive substance B has a half-life of four years and undergoes radioactivity by giving out beta radiation. Question A, which of the containers, aluminum, thin plastic or lead, lined would you use to safely store substance B? So out of these, we can only choose one. So the first thing that we need to understand is what kind of radiation are we talking about is beta radiation. So these three types of radiation have got different penetrating power. So it's that penetrating power that is going to help us to determine the kind of container that we need to use. So alpha is the least penetrative. So this can be stopped by even just a paper or plastic. So for this one you see alpha. So alpha particle. Then we have beta particle which is can be stopped by aluminum because it has more penetrating power than alpha which is heavier because beta is slightly lighter. Then we've got lastly which is gamma. So gamma has got higher penetrating power and this can only be stopped by a lead made container. So the lead made container can stop all the three. But in this case we are just talking about the beta particle. So the beta particle we can use aluminum. So aluminum is the correct answer in this case. If it was all the three you use lead. If it was just gamma it's only lead. If it was just alpha it was going to be plastic. Question B. Copy and complete the table C3.1. So we have the date. We have mass of original radioactive substance left. Then we have also time moving as per dates. But we are told that this radioactive has a half-life of four years. So at, as at 1st July 2008, we had 80 kg. Then as at 1st July 2012, which is four years exactly, then the half-life, so half of 8 kg would have decayed. So we are going to remain with 4 kg. Then by 1st July 2020, which means 8 years has passed. So 2016 is half of 4 kg, which is 2 kg remaining. Then by 2020, half of 2 kg, it will be 1 kg. So here it will be 1 kg. That one would have remained. Then this is how you need to complete this table to get at these at two marks. Question C of uh, C3. A giga counter was used to measure the activity in counts per minute from a radioactive sample in the laboratory over a period of years. Over this period, the background radiation was regularly measured at four counts per minute. So we have this table. Then Loma numeral 1, copy and complete the table C3.2 on the activity of the sample alone. So, if you look at the table, at the beginning, which is time 0, the total recorded counts per minute was 124. Then the one due to sample alone is just 120. So the difference is 124 minus 120 is a 4. So there is a difference of 4. So 4 is due to the background radiation. So to find for this one at period 1, it will be 80 minus 4, which is the background radiation. So we're going to have here 76. Then to be 52 minus also 4, it will be 48. Remember everyone has got in the background radiation. So we just subtract the background radiation. Then this is 12. Then 12 minus 4 is 8, which is that one. So once you do that, you are good to go. You are good, and you would get at this one mark. 
Number number two, explain what is meant by background radiation. That's what the question is asking us to do. So what is background radiation? So let me use uh, this space which is here to answer number number two. So when you talk about background radiation, we are talking about a uh, radioactive radiation such as alpha, beta, and gamma to which we are all exposed even in the absence of visible radioactive sources. So these, they come from uh, sources such as cosmic rays from the outer space, the ultraviolet from the sun. These are background radiation. Then also the other major sources of these could be the natural resources such as health, hair, beauty, materials, and food. These are the background radiation that we, we are talking about. So just to put in lighting, background radiation are the radioactive radiations such as alpha, beta, and gamma to which we um all exposed even in the absence of visible legion active sources thus what we are calling in radioactive substances. Number numero three of C, plot a graph of the values for activity due to the sample alone against the time. So we need to plot these uh, values on the graph. So what we need to know is when we go to the graph paper, ensure that the intervals are spaced in the same. So this one is increasing by one, one. So the first one time is not a problem. So we just start from zero all the way to six. Because six is the maximum. Then in terms of uh, activity due to sample alone, you notice that the lowest is eight. The maximum is 120. So the best is to start from zero, which is uh, just for radioactivity counts, which is eight radioactivity counts counts below then since the maximum is 120 we can increase let us say by 2020 so that we go from 0 to 120 then this increment should be 2020 throughout which is the same that will make our graph to be well scaled so let us move to the graph paper and plot at these values Okay, so we are now at the graph paper. So if you got the graph paper, what is key is ensure that you label exactly the x-axis and this one is properly labeled. Then the interval is from this is 0, 1, 1 throughout up to 6. Then you're increasing by 2020 on the vertical axis. So ensure that you do that. Once you do that, this will be one of the easiest questions that you come across. Because remember, in science paper, one, two questions are graphs, then one is not a graph so once you master now to plot this you notice that the 20 marks in this section will be guaranteed okay so let us look at the coordinates we are plotting this which is the activity due to the sample which should be y-axis remember the first one is always the y-axis then the second one is in the x-axis which is in time so we have 0 comma 120 so along 0, we go to 120, which is at this point. Let me use the red one, which is more visible. So this is 120. Then next is 1, 76. So at 1, we go to 76. Remember, these are 10 subunits. And we are increasing by 20. So it's 20 divided by 10. So each one is 2 counts. So if this is 80, so to go to 76, we need to move to subunits which we shall be here at this point exactly then 2 comma 48 so 48 is just in four subunits about 40 so we are going to go on. one two three four remember at the halfway is 50 so 48 should be somewhere here then 3 comma 30 which is in 3 comma 30 
so 30 is just the halfway between uh, 20 and 40 we should be somewhere exactly at the middle of this one then we go to 4 comma 19 so 4 comma 19 is just at the middle here the other one there is 18 because of each subunit of 10 is 2 units then we're going to a 5 comma 12 which is 5 comma 12 which is just above half of this which is 6 subunits from 0 then we have 6 comma 8 which is just at the fourth one which should be somewhere here like that then once you have this graph what you do is you join these points to get a smooth sharp line shall be something like that but you can use your, your, your pencil to draw a smooth line then once you do that and ensure that you label clearly the x-axis this uh, for max is free for you which is this one it's just a giveaway for max then loma number five using your graph determine the half-life of the substance so the half-life remember is a time it takes us half of the substance to decay remember we started with 120 so what time would take for half of 120 to decay so that we end up with 60 counts so at half life 60 counts would have gone out of 120 so we need to move along this line then come and draw a sketch line let me use a black one so come at this point at the point this is meeting you need this then come down and lead down here you now discover that this line is just at the middle which will be 1.5 it will just be halfway so the half life here will be 1.5 remember these are years so 1.5 years so it will take 1.5 years for half of 120 to decay so once you do that you are good to go and you get at this at 10 marks thank you for joining me in this episode if you haven't seen the other episodes please check out on our youtube channel we've got so much content for you we've got mathematics chemistry physics english and the additional mathematics remember we'll be happy to hear that you've asked your g12 exams